the design of planned attacks on buildings inside the U.S. and how operatives were directed to carry them out. That is valuable information for those of us to protect the American people. He told us the operatives have been instructed to ensure that the explosives went off at a high po a point that was high enough to prevent people trapped above from escaping. He gave us information that helped uncover Al Qaeda cells efforts to obtain biological weapons. This is Building 7, a 47-story skyscraper that fell on the afternoon of September 11. The government says that fire brought it down. However, 1,500 architects and engineers concluded it was a controlled demolition. Over 6,000 of my fellow service members have given their lives. And thousands of my fellow first responders are dying. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a structural engineer. I'm a New York City correction officer. I'm an Air Force pilot. I'm a father who lost his son. We're Americans. And we deserve... I lost my husband. My son. My uncle. My nephew. September 11th, 2001. Most people don't know a third tower fell that day. The government says fire brought it down. The collapse of World Trade Center 7 was primarily due to fires. I, along with 1,400 other architects and engineers, have found the government's conclusion to be physically impossible. 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 We need the truth about what happened that day. Go to RememberBuilding7.org. Why it fell, why it matters, and what you can do. ...for ending the madness is to take back control over your own money. Right now, your money is in the hands of the ruling families who own all of the world's banks, including the privatized central banks. How did they get to be so powerful? It started with the very first banks. In the beginning, banks were a safe place for people to store their gold. When the bankers discovered that people left most of their gold in the bank for safekeeping, they started lending out the gold that didn't belong to them and charging interest on it. Soon, kings and royalty were borrowing gold from the bankers to finance wars. Since wars were extremely good for business, the bankers started stirring up conflicts that led to more wars. Then they lent money out to both sides of the wars and collected huge interest rates. Eventually, the bankers got so rich that they built banks all over the world. They made millions in interest just by loaning out other people's money that didn't belong to them. They bought mansions and fancy clothes and hosted extravagant parties. The royal families of Europe became the banksters' biggest customers and rewarded them with high society titles like Lord and Baron and Sir. Using their money and royal influence, the banksters changed the laws of nations so they could put the world's central banks, mints, and money supply into private hands, their private hands. Out of every $1,000 that each of their customers deposited in their banks, they kept only $100 on hand. They took the rest of their customers' money and made loans with it, invested it, and started up other businesses like the steel business to create rails for their railway companies to transport oil for their oil companies. Pretty soon the banksters' new businesses grew into giant corporations. Those giant corporations turned the world's oceans, lakes, rivers, air, and soil into corporate toilets. When profits from all their oil, mining, and drug company monopolies soared, the banksters became the world's richest men, but their greed had no limits. They wanted to own the entire world, so they put their heads together and came up with an ingenious scheme to take control of all of the world's money and riches. Whoever owns all of the world's money, they said, owns the world. Using their media corporations, they launched a gigantic advertising campaign. 
They told people they no longer had to save up their money and wait for all the things they wanted in life. They could have everything they ever dreamed of right now. All they needed was a shiny plastic card. People rushed to fill up their wallets with shiny plastic cards instead of money. Like lottery winners, they went on drunken buying sprees and bought everything in sight. All the things they couldn't afford. Nobody even noticed when their hard-earned paychecks were automatically deposited in the bank without ever being cashed. Suddenly, people's bills, fines, taxes, and purchases were automatically deleted from their accounts and paying by check quickly became unfashionable. Eventually, money was phased out altogether and replaced with units of credit, which were really nothing more than numbers on a computer screen. The next thing the banksters did was replace people's plastic cards with their newest invention, barcode tattoos. These barcode tattoos contained all of a person's private credit information and could be invisibly tattooed onto people's wrists. Since having a wrist tattoo was like having an invisible debit card, and since nobody could steal it from you, everybody rushed to get one. All people had to do to buy whatever they wanted in life was scan their wrist tattoo over a scanner, and so the power for people to buy their most basic necessities in life fell completely into the hands of the banksters. Suddenly, people